Hey guys, welcome to Job 22. Okay, so let's take a look real quick. So we're on Job 22. We're just past the halfway mark. There's a lot to cover yet in this book. <clears throat> and it's important that we cover it. Right now, we are in a situation where Eliphaz, Bildad, and uh, what was his name? Tof Tof Tofor? Something like that. Um, are, because Job called them out. They're just laying into Job like crazy. Laying into him. This is this is demonic. The devil's using these these three guys because he's very desperate to be right and to show that Job is going that Job lacks faith to prove, try to prove God wrong. Satan is blinded and his pride always gets the better of him. Now he's pulling out all the stops at this point because Job has stood his ground. Job isn't interested in what they have to say and has openly called them out. He's not pulling his punches. Well, now they're going to, this has been a, several exchanges we've had now, now they're going to really, really get in, in Job's rear end. But it's going to backfire on them. But they're, what's they're happening now is, is, is Satan is trying to wear Job down. But his faith stands strong. But we're getting now, we're going to start seeing a picture of who these three men really are. And what's really in their heart. Because now they're going to start exposing themselves. They already have, but now we're really going to start to see it. <clears throat> if you guys haven't seen, um, Newsmax has an article. Of course, you're going to be seeing this the day after the fact. But they have a, a video up um, on YouTube of uh, Christian gravestones being attacked all around, all around the place. Um, this is normal. People are attacking anything involving God. It's normal. And like we covered the other morning, cast your cares upon the Lord. Don't let these things bother you. Don't let them cause you to fear. In fact, this should give you more hope because it shows just how much closer the Lord is. And like what's going on here with Job, we're all going to be in much the similar boat in many cases because we're going to start receiving these kinds of things from the people around us. Don't be surprised if in your own house you are directly attacked by someone that loves you. This is the way of the world. This is the way of evil. Because if a person isn't saved, they are susceptible to this and can be used by these demonic entities to wreak havoc in your life. Cast your cares onto the Lord. Look to him for all things. Get thee behind me, Satan. YB put up a great story that she did that. And it worked. And to this day still works. It does work. It works. It's surprisingly, you, you'll shock them because all of a sudden they'll just stop what they're doing and they'll, they won't, they don't know what to do. Get thee behind me, Satan. In the name of Jesus, get behind me, Satan. In the name of Jesus, I don't want anything to do with you, Satan. It works. I've used it and it works. Other people have used it and it works. They've seen with their own eyes that it works. Turn to the Lord. Rely on him. And you won't have to worry about these things. Oh, you're going to see some crazy stuff. Like this is, this year is going to be the year. It's going to be a crazy year. <clears throat> but that should not hinder us or stop us from, I mean, look, I got videos that are, that went public and then all of a sudden they're flipping the other way to the point now that I have to take screenshots every time I upload a video and then date it and mark what it is so that if something ever happens again, I can go back and, and prove it and check it. They're trying to stop the message from getting out. That's no surprise. That's no surprise. They don't want people to hear the truth. They don't want them to know the truth. They're trying to pass legislation in a bunch of countries, including America, to stop Christians from doing anything, to shut them down. Not the fake Christians that are out there, but us real Christians. Because they don't want to hear from us anymore. It's okay. The Lord is going to take care of it. Put our faith and trust in him. So, today, Job 22, Eliphaz accuses Job of wickedness. So here we go again with Eliphaz. <coughs> I believe this is the third time he spoke. Then Eliphaz the Tamanite answered and said, Can a man be profitable to God, though he who is wise may be profitable to himself? Is it any pleasure to the Almighty that you are righteous? Or is it gain to him that you make your ways blameless? 
Is it because of your fear of him that he corrects you and enters into judgment with you? Is not your wickedness great and your iniquity without end? You notice in the last two interactions with Eliphaz, he spoke one way. And you notice how he's kind of changed it. He's changed the way he's speaking. Especially how he's referring to God. For you have taken pledges from your brother for no reason, and stripped the naked of their clothing. You have not given the weary water to drink, and you have withheld bread from the hungry. But the mighty man possessed the land, and the honorable man dwelt in it. You have sent uh, widows away empty, and the strength of the fatherless was crushed. Therefore snares roll around you, and sudden fear troubles you. Or darkness so that you cannot see, and an abundance of water covers you. Is not God in the height of heaven? And see the highest stars, how lofty they are. And you say, what does God know? Can he judge through the deep darkness? The clouds cover him so that he cannot see. Listen closely to what he's saying. Thick clouds cover him, God, so that he cannot see. And he walks above the circle of heaven. Look at how he's representing God. How backwards it is. God put the thick clouds around him. He can see just perfectly fine. His eyes are all over the earth. Will you keep to the old way which wicked men have trod? So he's specifically blaming Job for things he didn't do. Verse 16, who were cut down in their, before their time, whose foundations were swept away by a flood. They said to God, depart from us. What can the Almighty do to them? He's saying God doesn't have all power. He isn't almighty. <clears throat> but he refers to him as almighty. This is a demon. This is a demon talking. This is, this is demonic. They said to God to part from us. So what can the almighty do to them? Everything. Verse 18. Yet he filled their houses with good things. Because the counsel of the wicked is far from me. The righteous see it and are glad, and the innocent laugh at them. Surely our adversaries are cut down, and the fire consumes their remnant. Watch this. Verse 21. Now acquaint yourself with him, and be at peace. Thereby good will come to you. Receive, please, instruction from his mouth, and lay up his words in your heart. If you return to the Almighty, you will be built up. You will remove iniquity far from your tents. Then you will lay your gold in the dust, and the gold of Ophir among the stones of the brooks. Yes, the Almighty will be your gold and your precious silver. For then you will have your delight in the Almighty and lift up your face to God. What in the world is he talking about? What is he attempting to do? Because he's speaking out of both sides of his mouth here. First he's talking negative about God, then he's talking a positive about God in the same sentence. Verse 27, you will make your prayer to him. He will hear you, and you will pay your vows. You will also declare a thing, and it will be established for you. So light will shine on your ways. This is prosperity preaching. <laughs> Listen, you will also declare a thing, and it will be established for you. So light will shine on your ways. You're going to speak it into existence. <clears throat> you wonder where they got that from? That's where they got that from. He's prosperity preaching. Verse 29, when they cast you down and you say exaltation will come, then he will save the humble person. When you speak it, God will do it. He will even deliver one who is not innocent. Yes, he will be delivered by the purity of your hands. He's trying to get Job to act like he's God. This is Satan. This is all Satan. And this is a ton of prosperity preaching. What is wrong with this guy? He's demon-possessed. But that's exactly what he's doing. He First, he's talking good about God, and then he's also talking bad about God, in the same sentence, in the same thought. Then he's trying to get Job to admit he's done something wrong and then speak 
negatively to God. Basically not going to him, but turning his back on him. And then using God like a genie in a lamp. This is prosperity preaching. So now you know where all them people get it, like Joyce Meyer and all them. Where they get it from? They get it from Job. They've been listening to Eliphaz. <coughs> and Benny Hinn and all them goons. So this is what he's doing. Well, why would he do that? Because that's what Satan's trick is. That's what Satan has always done. And see, I don't know if anybody who's ever talked about this, who's ever pointed this out, but it's right there. You will make your prayer to him. He will hear you and you will pay your vows. You will also declare a thing, verse 28, and it will be established for you. So light will shine on your ways. So he, Job's going to say it and God's going to do it. So we, now we get to tell God what to do. No, it doesn't work that way. The Eliphaz has got a problem. His idea of God is skewed, but, and this isn't a defense for him, but he's being influenced by demons and speaking on, on their behalf. And it's all a trick to get Job to give in. It's all a trick to get Job to give up. <coughs> to get Job to curse God. To get Job to look to himself. You notice there's a, all, there's a whole lot of works there. You will pay your vows. Like, that's going to matter. There's a whole lot of works going on there. This is the second time Eliphaz has mentioned this, about Job doing things that's going to make a difference. And his works. More of that going on there. Amazing. So, all the stuff we have going on today in the, in the fake church, in the false church, it, none of it's new. It's all very old. It's been going on since the beginning. God is to be there when I need him. And he's a genie in the bottle and I can just get stuff and there it is. And, I, and if I speak it, it's going to happen. And that's what they, they teach today. Ridiculous. But we know it's not new. They didn't come up with it. It's very old. Because Eliphaz is doing the same thing. So now these men are exposing themselves for who they really are and what's really going on. They are demons in disguise. Posing as his friends. And doing everything they can to break him down and to bring him down. Just because Satan wants to be right. Just because Satan wants to show God up. But see, God knows something that Satan doesn't. <clears throat> and God does a lot of work in secret that nobody knows about. So that was Job 22. The next video will be Job 23. Job proclaims God's righteous judgments. So he's going to... Uh, Eliphaz came over here and slapped him. Job's going to kick him in the chest. <laughs> oh, you want to talk about God? Okay, here you go. So what has happened so far? All the way up to this point, every single time Job has come back and declared the truth about God. These men have no recourse. There's nothing they can do. And after Job does that, then he complains of violence on the earth. So Job, Job's got just complaints here. But notice, he, again, we're going to see he never accuses God. Then Bildad, he has a short speech. But he gets pretty nasty in this thing. Because in the last verse there, he calls, him a, calls Job a maggot. <laughs> <coughs> So you can see how this is starting to devolve. And it's just, it's desperation on Satan's part, trying to become, to prove, be proved right. It's not going to work. And these three guys, these three characters are going to get shown up for who they really are. And they're going to be dealt with. All right, guys, that was Job 22. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next one.